I'm Jimmy. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope your Monday was good. I uh, hope your weekend was good. By the way, something very strange happened to me over the weekend. Uh, you'll like to scare me. Sunday morning, I woke up. I was alone in the house. The kids were at their grandparents. My wife was uh, walking for no reason. So I wake up, I go to the kitchen, and I notice that a bird has, what's the word we can use on TV? Emptied on our door. Okay, so, which is not great, but whatever, not a big deal. But then I'm looking at it, and I'm wondering, how did it hit at that angle? Did the bird come in sideways, like it was sliding into second base or something? How did it get there? And that's when I realized that this pigeon guano was coming from inside the door. It was inside. I still don't know how it happened. From a physics standpoint, it, it doesn't make any sense. I mean, logic tells me the door must have been open and the bird somehow like edged over and did that thing <laughs> birds love doing to us, the revenge of the birds, but the door wasn't really open. For a moment, I had to think, is it possible that this came out of me? Like I sneezed or something, but... I mean, to hit the glass at that trajectory, there's only one bird in the world who can make that shot, and he's retired now, so he hasn't trapped on a window in years, probably. Anyway, I don't know how this happened, but I know it was a bird. Uh, it must live in the area. My plan now is to find that bird's nest and go number two in it. That's right. But it was good luck for the Dodgers, that bird. Yes. Did you, you watch the game, right, Carol? Yes, I did, yes. Our hometown Los Angeles Dodgers came back to win a Game 7 thriller. They beat a strong Atlanta Braves team to advance to the World Series for the third time in four years. They'll take on the Tampa Bay Rays starting tomorrow night in Arlington, Texas. They've been holding the playoffs at a neutral site because of the pandemic. So um, this is how the fans here in L.A. are celebrating. They had a drive-in watch party at Dodger Stadium last night. You pull up with your car, they set up a video screen so fans can watch the series kinda together. Tickets for the World Series uh, games to sit in the parking lot are $75 to bring your car. That's right. <laughs> this quarantine has gone on so long, people in LA are now willing to pay $75 to get back in a traffic jam. <laughs> Speaking of Dodgers, President Trump has been uh, all over the place lately. He had a he had a campaign fundraiser down the freeway in Newport Beach yesterday, and he was in Las Vegas yesterday. And what do you do when you're in Las Vegas? Why, well, of course, you go to church. Just in time for early voting, Trump made his annual visit to church yesterday. He went to something called the International Church of Las Vegas. There he's getting ready for the collection basket. He counted out, you can see here, he counts out $100. And then he puts, yes, he wants to make sure he has that fresh, clean bills. Turned out it wasn't a collection basket. What they sent around was a, a plastic collection bucket. Here it comes. There you go. And he made his first charitable donation of the year. So congratulations. <laughs> or, or was it? Let's slow that down and take a look at that again here, right at the moment uh, where he... Yeah, oh, my goodness. <laughs> Why, that son of a gun, he pulled the old... Switcheroo on Jesus. <laughs> the president has been giving his worshipers lots of opportunities to see him live and in person. On Saturday, Trump was in Janesville, Wisconsin, where he lamented the challenges of running against what he considers to be an unworthy opponent. If Crazy Joe becomes president, it's not even conceivable. No, no, running against him, it's put such pressure because I'm running against the worst in the history of presidential, and now if I lose, can you imagine if I lose? I will have lost to the worst candidate, the worst candidate in the history of presidential politics. If I lose, what do I do? You go to jail. You, you go directly to jail. You do not pass go. You do not collect $200 million. This was good, too. Newsmax had to preempt its irregular programming to air one of these gumball rallies of Trump's, but it would seem that someone forgot to change the title in the channel guide because his speech was listed under the title The Life of Adolf Hitler, Rise of the Demon. <laughs> the Hitler family is furious. Uh, they're talking about suing. The president has been going a mile a minute lately, so we slowed him down to half speed for tonight's edition of Drunk Donald Trump. Darling, you're the most handsome president. 
I said, First Lady, am I the most handsome president ever? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Uh, does anyone believe Melania said any of that? Or... He likes to call her first lady because it sounds better than third wife. Meanwhile, <laughs> meanwhile, uh, cases of COVID are going way up all over the country. Some experts believe that the next six to 12 weeks are going to be the darkest of this pandemic so far. It turns out we weren't supposed to gather in a water park with 3,000 drunken strangers. And of course, as many states are bracing for uh, the third peak of the virus, the president is busy attacking Dr. Fauci. Trump repeatedly attacked Dr. Fauci today, called him an idiot, he said if he'd listened to Dr. Fauci, we'd have 700,000 or 800,000 deaths. He called him a disaster, and he said he likes him a few times. <laughs> he hates him, but he likes him. He's definitely jealous of all the positive attention Dr. Fauci gets, which he wouldn't even get, by the way, if Trump didn't constantly contradict him. But I, I don't know why Donald Trump still thinks he can uh, ignore this virus and it will go away. I mean, that strategy, it didn't work with Don Jr. and Eric and it isn't gonna work here, okay? <laughs> the boss baby was probably triggered by Dr. Fauci's appearance on 60 Minutes last night. Dr. John LaPook asked about a uh, deceptive and brazenly manipulated campaign ad uh, of Trump's that F Fauci has repeatedly asked the president's team to pull. I can't imagine that anybody could be doing more Stunning. Fauci says his words were taken out of context, but this week the ad continued to run in key battleground states. I was referring to something entirely different. I was referring to the grueling work of the task force that, God, we were knocking ourselves out seven days a week. I don't think we could possibly have done any more than that. Did the steam start to come out of your ears? No, it did. Quite frankly, I got really ticked off. That's why they call him Fauci the Grouch. He was very angry. <laughs> Normally, when a guy in a turtleneck is uh, that ticked off, it's because the planetarium closed early. But, but it's crazy that at the same time Trump is calling Dr. Fauci a disaster and an idiot, he's running commercials to make it seem like Fauci said he's doing a great job. Meanwhile, Dr. Birx is somewhere out there hiding under a pile of scarves, hoping she doesn't get dragged into this, too. Trump has reportedly been keeping tabs on any Republicans who have the temerity to speak out against him. So it's, so far, it's a very short list. Not many of them have had the courage to criticize the president or even to come out and defend Dr. Fauci, but this was a feather in the president's red cap. He picked up a rare and major Hollywood endorsement this weekend from a former Dancing with the Stars runner-up. Kirstie Alley wrote, I'm voting for Donald Trump because he's not a politician. I voted for him four years ago for this reason and shall vote for him again for this reason. He gets things done quickly and he will turn the economy around quickly. There you have it, folks. There you have it. <laughs> Love that she included an emoji that looks like it's rolling its eyes at her tweet. <laughs> And what do you think she means by gets things done? Yells and watches TV? He hasn't gotten it. I always like Diane better anyway, I'll be honest. <laughs> you know, there are, um... Sorry, Rebecca. New details about how much money Donald Trump owes, and the answer is a lot more than we even thought. According to Forbes, the president will have to pay back $900 million worth of loans over the next four years. If Trump is reelected, uh, they're saying they might have to foreclose on the White House, but I'm not sure where <laughs> he's planning to get money like that, but I did notice on his website, the price of his hats have gone up. <laughs> so, can we please just fast forward to the point where Trump is doing cameo message for like $85? <laughs> The president is totally off the rails right now. The Tone Deft Comedy Jam stopped in Carson City last night where Trump showed that he knows what matters to Americans most right now, and that, of course, is dishwashers. The dishwashers, they had a little problem. They didn't give enough water. Like, so people would run them 10 times. So they end up using more water. And the thing's no damn good. We freed it up. Now you can buy a dishwasher, and it comes out, and it's beautiful. Go buy a dishwasher. <laughs> Take it from a man who's never washed a dish in his entire life. I think he thinks this makes him relatable to women because he talked about dishwashers for a long time. So what's the problem with your dishwasher? Well, they don't give us any water. I mean, you know, it'd be nice to be able to get enough water. What's the problem? We need more water. Not that much, but give... 
I, I said, how much you need? This, would you like more? Well, I'd love more. Would you give us more? Yeah, I'll give you more. You have so much water, you don't know what to do with it, right? So we gave them what they need. And now the dishwashers are incredible. They work beautifully. <laughs> what a speech. It was his spaghetti's burger dress. It was really a... And then, after a good chunk of dishwasher talk, he moved on to his other favorite topic, water pressure in the shower, and the terrible choice we now face, which is, should we wash our hands to protect us from COVID or take a shower and die? If somebody said you could have 42 gallons a person, I think a day, that sounds like a lot of water, right? It's not. It's like a quick shower and let's wash your hands. Then they have a mandate, wash your hands at all times. You must always constantly wash. Then they say 42 gallons. They say, wait a minute. Okay, I got a deal. I won't take a shower for the next couple of weeks. But I'll wash my No, it's true. So 42 gallons, it sounds like a lot, but it's really not. A friend of mine, he has this massive house. He says, I'm not going to be able to take a shower. I live in a house, this gorgeous house, right? Can't take a shower. Oh, no, your poor, dirty, wealthy friend. That He can't take... <laughs> Let's get back to church to pray for him and his massive house. It's such a weird thing to keep coming back to. The showers, the toilets, dishwashers, sinks. Uh, they've now become a regular part of his live appearance routine. It feels very random, but if there's one thing we know about Donald Trump, it's that he's always promoting, and it would seem that his backup plan for the next four years might be in the world of household appliances and repair. Looking for top-notch appliance and home repairs? Call Handy Don. I'm the only one that can fix it. Handy Don can handle any home repairs. Dishwashers, sinks, toilets, light bulbs. Washers and dryers? We'll never forget your washers and your dryers. And what about showers? Can you fix those? Sinks, showers, and toilets. All work is done by the former president personally. I can fix it myself. With a wrench. His tiny hands are perfect for delicate repair jobs. We can fix it so fast. How fast? Fast, fast, fast. He may have been a sh president, but he can make your home great again. I guarantee it. So why wait? Call Handy Don now. No habla espanol. Work may be done by illegal immigrants. Don Jr. and Eric may tag along. Other restrictions apply. Hi, I'm Jimmy Kimmel. Click below to subscribe to our YouTube channel, or if you want to be that way about it, don't.